Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 819. If you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 819 to 821, click on the link below the video. Hey, in 819, we have an exciting video here. Here's what we need to do. Someone needs to look up the second item. And actually, at the top of the sheet, I have a little simplified example here. But here's the setup. This person had an income statement. There was some year to date and then some month numbers. And they needed to look up, uh, say, a production cost two and entity two. They needed to not only find the year to date number, right? So entity or product cost two would be here and entity two would be there. So we need to deliver that there. But how do we look up the second one here? We need to get that number and bring it here. And here's a further complication, right? Uh, the income statement was a certain way and it could not be changed. We didn't have multiple year dates up here. And these were not in some pattern order, right? This, in essence, is a type of uh, two way lookup. We need to look up. Um, the cost and then the entity number here. The first one's easy, but the second one is going to be tough because how do we get to the second one? Now, if they were always the same distance, like one, two, three, and then one, two, three, you could add, you could just use match function to find the first one and then add a number. But in this case, we don't know. Once we find the first one, we don't know where the second one might be. All right. So again, the idea is uh, look up the first one and the second one. So the, the really the point of this video is how to look up second. All right. Uh, let's do the first one though. Um, here's our cost and our entity. So the cost and then the entity would be six. So we need to get this 635 and deliver it here. This is a straight uh, two-way lookup. This and this. Now we're going to highlight the whole range here for the first one. But the cool thing is, is that the lookups like VLOOKUP or MATCH, we can tell it to find the first one by saying, uh, do an exact match. So here, this would be a straight VLOOKUP. Now, wait a second. I thought I said this was a two-way lookup, because we need to find this, something in the row, and something in the columns. But no problem. You can do a two-way lookup with VLOOKUP. Just highlight. Um, all these numbers, including the spaces between, there's the first column that we're looking up. Oops, I'm sorry. Highlight the value to look up. I'm looking up a product, uh, production cost six, comma, and then the table is this entire range here, right? So it'll look up the first production six. That will give VLOOKUP the row number. All right, ready? Comma. But what about column index? Well, we can't just type in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but we can use match. Match will give us the ordinal position, which will be perfect uh, for finding the column number. Right? So match, I'm going to look up this. That's the lookup value. Now, match is a lookup function, but it'll look up a value comma in this array right here and tell you the ordinal position, which means What's the ordinal position? One, two, three, four, five, because it's looking up uh, entity six. Comma, and here's the trick. Notice there's entity six here and an entity six here. But for match, for match type, you say exact by typing a zero. And then it will only find the first one. If you put a zero in match or VLOOKUP, it ignores duplicates and just takes the first, which is what we want for the year to date number. All right, so column index and then comma. I'm also going to use exact match here, putting a 0, not a false. Either one will work, but 0 is nice, quick, and easy. All right, so that will work. If we were to change this to 2 and 2, right, then it would return the 5, 4, 2, 7. All right, I'm going to go back to this 6. By the way, you see me changing the. Uh, things here and somehow it's looking up the second one with conditional formatting that's the next video uh, 820 that'll be amazing all right now what do we do here uh, well how in the world are we going to get right now somehow we need to we're going to have to do a two way lookup and we are going to use um, index but how in the world do we get that second value so in essence i need um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I need a 9. Well, once you're looking up a value and there could be duplicates, you have to switch over to array formulas. Now I'm going to just do the part of the formula that will give me the column number, or in essence, the column number. So I'm going to use small. 
And I'm going to have to build an array inside of this small. I'm going to say if anything in this range right here is equal to this. Right now, we get a true in position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a true 6, 7, 8, in the 9 also, right? Comma. And actually, we can highlight this and hit uh, F9, right? You see there's a true and a true in those two positions. I hit F9 to evaluate, but I'm going to Control Z to undo that. Well, what do we want? We want the ordinal position. Well, we're going to get that by doing not row like we usually do. We're, we're Oops. We're going to use the column function. Now, column, I can simply highlight all the way to there. Right now, this would work. If I close parentheses, watch this. I highlight it and hit F9. It gives me 1 to 10, which is exactly how many columns potentially there are. But if you were to insert a column here and move this over, this would not work. It would give you, instead of 1, 2, 3, it would give you 2, 3, 4, et cetera. So Control Z. I'm simply going to make a more robust array of potential column numbers by minusing column of this. Now, right now, this will give me, and the beauty of this is if I insert a column, then it will say uh, B11 minus B11. Well, that would be 2 minus 2, which is 0. So to have it remain 1 through 10, you then add 1. All right. Close parentheses on the if. By the way, there's the logical test, which is delivering multiple trues and falses. Here's the value of true, which is um, returning multiple uh, column numbers. When I comma and get to false, I do not need that. If you leave it out in the if function, it'll just show a false, which is fine for us. Now let's just see what this gives us, the if. F9. It's an array of falses and exactly what we want, a 5 and a 9. For this problem, what do we want? Small is going to ask for which small, the first, the second, the third. We're always going to want 2. So Control Z. I'm going to put comma and 2. All right, now that won't work. It gives us a num error because what? This is the if function right there. Once you put more than one true or false in there, it's an array formula, so you have to Control Shift Enter. 9. Now it just happens to have the dollar formatting. I'm going to Control Shift tilde, and that works. Let's see if we change this to 2 and 2. Now it gives us a 10, which is exactly what we want. Control ZZ. Now we're going to use this inside of index or VLOOKUP. Maybe I'll do VLOOKUP instead. Copy, but I want to do something. I want to, actually, we'll do that in a second. Um, let's go ahead. It's delivering a 9 right now. So I'm simply going to use this inside of VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP, oh, well, wait a second. I still need to look up this. So I'm going to click for lookup value that, comma, the table is this entire thing right here, including the blanks. All right, comma, there's the, in, the column number, that small. And then I'm going to come to the end. I can see the column number is that big, small, comma, and the range lookup, I'm going to put 0. Now, technically, these are sorted in ascending order, so it would work without a 0. But in case they're not, let's put a 0. If I enter, it gives me num, because this is an array form. You have to Control, Shift, Enter. And is it giving me the right one? Wow, that is so cool. Let's try it. It's looking up the second one there. All right, so I'm going to change this to 2. Well, right there, we have production cost 2 for entity 6. It's delivering the right one if I change it to 2. Now, one problem with this setup, and I wasn't quite sure this person has had how, to, how they had it set up. They just said it was completely irregular. In this case, now we notice we have entity 1, 2, 6. So it's potential we could put entity 1 here. And then it says, well, since there's only one entity one in this list, it can't give us the second. So you either don't do that, or you'd have to do something like, and uh, this is going to be working 2007 uh, only. I'll show you a 2003 formula in just a second. If error, if error is just a huge improvement on earlier versions, this came in 2007. That's the value. If it evaluates to the error, error which it was just a moment ago, you come to the end, type a comma, the value of the error. You just type double quote, close parentheses. 
control shift enter because it is an array formula. Now I want to try, well, so there we have it, year to date and month. Now I want to show you a 2010 and then a 2003 formula. And the similarity between these two formula, the formula we're going to use for 2010, and I'm, I'm going to copy certain parts of this. So I'm going to copy all the way up to there. And I'm going to, con instead of control C, I'm going to control CC. That opens up the clipboard. If it doesn't, then you have to go to Home and click right there. And if you want CC to work in the future, then you click the Options and change it there. All right? I have one piece there. Now I'm going to also need this little piece, Control C. It shows up there. And then finally, the column plus minus column plus one, Control C. So I have my pieces there. All right, now I'm going to do 2010. Now notice here, this took require control plus shift plus enter. And which function did we use to get the column number? It was small, right? So I'm just going to try something here. Equals aggregate is a new function. And the amazing thing about this is it can handle arrays without using control shift enter. A bunch of functions and starting right here, all of these can handle arrays. And sure enough, I can tell aggregate 15 and it acts exactly like the small. So comma, and then here's a, something that's also awesome. If we can tell it to ignore errors, because the array we're going to create will have divide by zero error. So I'm going to say 6, comma, and then we build our array here. Now I'm going to, in parentheses, and click on this column piece. Because remember, the ultimate thing we're dumping into small is column numbers, right? Oh, OK. Notice I put it in parentheses. Now divide open parentheses, and the divisor, the, the denominator will be the, tr the trigger for where the entity is matched. That will give us trues and falses. This will divide all of the numbers. Anytime it sees a false, it will give a divide by 0 error. Anytime it sees a true, it will give us the column number. So if I hit F9, boom, there it is. So we got a, a 4 and a 10, Control-Z. Um, no control shift enter required here. All right, there's the array comma. You get to the K. That's because this is for small to close parentheses. Now watch this. I'm going to hit Enter, and it gives me a 10. Now I am going to copy this whole thing. Notice it's over there. I'm delete, and now I'm going to backspace and put this in. That was the first part there. Remember, what do we need? We need a column index. So now I'm going to click on this aggregate. That's the same as that small piece we had before. Comma, and then exact, or for put a 0 for exact. Uh, close parenthesis on the VLOOKUP. And now the IF error, that's the value. So we comma and double quote. Enter. No need for Control Shift Enter. Let's test them. Mm, 6. You can see it. Uh, let's see, did that work? Uh, we got the production cost 2, so entity 2. Oh, entity 6 right there. That's working. And it looks also like the 428. That worked also. Change this to 2. What we do? What would we do for uh, 2003? Well, I'm going to come up here and just steal this whole little VLOOKUP part. And here's the problem with earlier versions, and this is why if error is so awesome. With if error, we only have to run this huge array thing right one time. Control Shift Enter. But in earlier versions, you'd have to go equals if is error. Throw it in there, that whole thing in there into is error. If it came out an error, that would be the logical test. Then you'd have to put double quote. Otherwise, the value of false, you'd have to repeat the VLOOKUP and then Control Shift Enter. Right? It would work, but it had to run through that array formula two different times. All right, so look up second. Um, in our next video, we'll actually see how to do the conditional formatting. And we'll see that you can get an array formula to work right in the conditional formatting dialog box. All right, see you next video.